we're def- back, man. Uh, we're definitely I here. Just, uh, not at the end of the day. We are not. We are fresh, and we have not recorded. We've just got on. We the just show. got on here. Thanks for having me back. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> how did you get invited to the UFC? What happened? Uh, this dude there. Shout out to Gavin. He actually DM'd me like five years ago from the UFC account. We talked for a bit, and then you know, just shit happens. And then he like followed up with me a couple weeks ago. He's like, "Yo, man, are, are you uh, in town? We're coming to Anaheim." I was like, "Yeah, I'm definitely in town." He's like. Come on out. Got there and I was I was ringside. What's it like seeing an actual fight from there? From that distance, I mean, I see why Joe is always talking about their bodies. Literally, so many muscles. There's literally no other way you can describe it. I mean, dude, Francis Ngannou is gigantic. I was eye line with Joe. Okay. Joe was getting really? in the octagon. I was like, I see you, man. I definitely appreciate what is going on in, you know, in a fight. But I think the biggest thing is, especially heavyweights, that ring, every time they move, like the mats would just thud and you just get all those extra little nuanced things where you're like, oh shit. It's funny, like UFC fights, you always see the most like random person. Not that you're random, but I'm saying like someone oh, you yeah, never no, expect. Cool. Yeah. No, 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 I'm just saying like, it's like just because of the, the camera, the way the camera is on the fighters where you see like the people the, behind them. Yeah. Like the yeah. first like 10 rows. Yeah. And that's always like the celebrity row. Yeah. So it's always like you're watching a fight and you're like, is that Clay Aiken? Is that Apollo Ono? <laughs> Why the fuck is he? Who does he know? Yeah. It'd always be like a weird ensemble of people. Oh yeah. Always. It'd be like a women's basketball pro and then like a bantamweight fighter. Yeah. And then like maybe, you know, fucking, um... <laughs> Joel Orstein. <laughs> like, that guy watches MMA. I, I think I was row eight, but like the side I was on. So they have like the super famous section. Right. I wasn't there. Okay. Okay. I was just like, you know, ringside. Ran into a couple of people. I ran into this comedian, uh, Rocky Dale Davis. That man, in some ways, stole the show. He was, uh, he listens to the podcast. Shout out to you, Rocky. He was hilarious. He was drunk and then just screaming. There's this guy that kept standing up in front of us. And, you know, this is a little bit of a friendly fire here, but he was a shorter man. And when he was stand up, bless his heart, man, he was just trying to get, he was just trying to see. Okay. He was trying to see what's going on in the <laughs> okay. fight. He was stand up. And unfortunately, we're all sitting down and he's blocking our view. So Rocky, being the big motherfucker that he is, wasted no time and just saying, Hey, you short motherfucker, <laughs> sit down! <laughs> and at first, everyone around Damn. us was, was like, Ooh. But then as the night kept going and this dude kept standing up <laughs> and like covering key moments, there was like this, these, row, these row of dudes behind us. They started getting frustrated with the guys standing up. So then Rocky would get at it and then one of their guys would be like, shut the fuck down! <laughs> and then it just became more people behind to the point where this dude, he would like think about it. Three or four voices would be like, don't, fucking don't, <laughs> don't. Like he'd go to stand up and then... Yeah, literally just... All right, no, I wasn't gonna, yeah. I wasn't gonna stand up anyways. And then he would turn to his friend, he'd be like, are they fucked? Dude, this is fucking pissing me. <laughs> Off, I then, just want to stand. But he was a short fella? He was a short fella. Oh. Rocky made sure. Well, then sure I feel for him. I do as well, but I was also like, sit the fuck down. Rocky made sure that that dude knew he was small that night. <laughs> oh, no. You could say it's mean. By the time you stand up on your ninth or tenth time, it was just like this unspoken thing where everyone understands, yeah, we're ringside, but we're all just going to honor that we can't see. Literally, the rows are doing that TikTok shit. Oh, so like, they're all on the ground. Yeah. There's no like out like. No, we're okay. all on one level. So everyone is politely agreed that if you're in row one, you're going to stay straight. Row two, you're going to all lean to the left. Row three, you're all going to lean to the right. Mm. And we're just going to. Gotcha. So everyone can see what's going on. So if one person stands, it fucks the whole thing up. Uh, I mean, he stood up as like people were getting knocked out. And everyone's like, oh, shut the fuck. <laughs> It was so frustrating. It was mean, but it wasn't that mean. And as a small person standing next to Rocky, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna lie. I, I switched sides. I understood part of his frustration as well because the UFC brought him out to do stand up at the weigh-ins. I don't want to take away from his story because it is his story, but damn, he sent me a clip. My soul would have been left in pieces because he bombed. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like he was like they weren't expecting stand up. It's like four in the afternoon. <laughs> They're expecting dudes to stand on a scale. That's it. And I'm, I was like, all the lights were on, huh? He's like, yep. Oh, Jesus. And I was Christ. like, did they leave the scale up there for you to walk around it as you did material? And then he showed me in the live stream of it, they didn't mic the crowd. So every time he told a joke, it sounded like pure silence so the clip he sent me is like you know like Jesus. his closing joke it's like his big punchline. he says it and he's like fuck y'all man i thought i would have had y'all oh and then damn. he's like i'm out of here i'm you know, i'm rocky dale davis and he leaves and damn. so yeah it, he he had a hell of a night so 
unfortunately, the short man had to take the brunt of it. That's fair. Um, I get it now. I'm on y'all's side now. Yeah, I mean, I also got his, you know, I ran into Andrew Schultz and we chopped it up for a oh, while. Oh, nice. So. I think I saw him in Venice. Yeah, Really probably. briefly. Yeah. He was getting out of an Uber or something like that. And I was like, oh, I think that's him. Tall son of a bitch, that guy. So he was there too? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, he is tall. He's really fucking tall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I did see him. You having fun tonight so far? Oh, yeah, most definitely. I had a chat with Dana earlier. He said that I could fight any eight-year-old I want. Uh, in the really? Octagon. Yeah. We're so. setting this up. Yeah. Have you picked out an eight-year-old to fight? Uh, I'm thinking any, like, rich toy reviewer on YouTube. <laughs> that way I can get the biggest payout I possible. I know who you're talking Maybe. Who? Well, I mean, my son's a... I'm not going to say any names you have to say it. Ryan's Toys. Watch it back. <laughs> it's also funny because I think Ryan's Toys is like... He's 10. 16 now. He's 10? Yeah. Okay, I was like, it's been, he's been eight forever. Yeah, whatever, man. That kid's been reviewing toys forever Long and they just keep time. pretending he's the same age. He's like, Dad, I don't even like these fucking things anymore. Can you imagine when he's... Just review it. <laughs> he's 16, chain smoking. Yeah. <sighs> this is the Lego Millennium Falcon. I don't know, Dad. What's the line? Ripping his jewel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 